Hey, if you're not already a subscriber, please click on the button right now so you don't miss anything. Thanks. We can neither confirm nor deny. That's the Pentagon's standard answer when they're asked questions about nuclear weapons. However, due to public pressure and congressional oversight, both Department of Defense and the Department of Energy were made to confirm. And the two agencies released a joint report titled The Histories of Nuclear Weapons Accidents. So during the Cold War, the U.S. military had 32 nuclear accidents, also known as broken arrow incidents. So Appendix B of this joint DOD-DOE report contains summaries of these 32 accidents. So let's review some of them chronologically. August 5th, 1950. A B-29 carrying a weapon but no capsule experienced two runaway propellers and a landing gear retraction difficulty on takeoff from Fairfield Suisun Air Force Base, now known as Travis Air Force Base. The aircraft attempted an emergency landing, crashed, and burned. The fire was fought for 12 to 15 minutes before the weapon's high explosive material detonated. 19 crew members and rescue personnel were killed in the crash and or the resulting detonation, including General Travis, for whom the base is now dedicated. May 22, 1957, a B-36 was ferrying a weapon from Biggs Air Force Base, Texas to Kirtland Air Force Base in New Mexico. At 11.50 a.m. Mountain Standard Time, while approaching Kirtland at an altitude of 1,700 feet, the weapon dropped from the bomb bay, taking the bomb bay doors with it. Weapons parachutes were deployed, but apparently did not fully retard the fall because of the low altitude. The impact point was approximately four and a half miles south of the Kirtland Control Tower and 0.3 miles west of the Sandia Base Reservation. The high explosive material detonated, completely destroying the weapon and making a crater approximately 25 feet in diameter and 12 feet deep. Fragments and debris were scattered as far as one mile from the impact point. July 28, 1957. Two weapons were jettisoned from a C-124 off the east coast of the United States. There were three weapons and one nuclear capsule aboard the aircraft at the time. Nuclear components were not installed in the weapons. The C-124 aircraft was en route from Dover Air Force Base, Delaware, when a loss of power from number one and two engines was experienced. The maximum power was applied to the remaining engines. However, they could not maintain level flight. At that point, the decision was made by the crew to jettison cargo in the interest of safety of the aircraft and crew. The first weapon was jettisoned at 4,500 feet. The second was jettisoned at approximately 2,500 feet. No detonation occurred from either weapon. Both weapons are presumed to have been damaged from impact with the ocean. Both weapons are presumed to have submerged almost instantly. The C-124 landed in the vicinity of Atlantic City with the remaining weapon and the nuclear capsule aboard. A search for the weapons or debris had negative results. February 5th, 1958. A B-47 was on a simulated combat mission that started at Homestead Air Force Base. While near Savannah, the B-47 had a mid-air at 3.30 a.m. with an F-86. Following the collision, the B-47 attempted three times to land at Hunter Air Force Base in Georgia with a nuclear weapon aboard. Because of the damage of the aircraft, the airspeed could not be reduced enough to ensure a safe landing. So the crew decided to jettison the Mark 15 Mod Zero nuclear weapon rather than expose Hunter Air Force Base to the possibility of a high explosive detonation. A nuclear detonation was not possible since the nuclear capsule was not aboard the aircraft. The weapon was jettisoned into the water several miles from the mouth of the Savannah River in Wausau Sound off Tybee Beach, Georgia. But the precise weapon's impact point is unknown. The weapon was dropped from an altitude of approximately 7,200 feet and an aircraft speed of 180 to 190 knots. No detonation occurred. After jettison, the B-47 landed safely. The weapon was considered to be irretrievably lost. As a side note, in 1998, a retired military officer and his partner also combed the sound with a Geiger counter, but were unsuccessful. Today, the Department of Energy believes the 7,600-pound bomb is resting 5 to 15 feet under the seabed. The DOE reported that there is no current or future possibility of a nuclear explosion, and the risk of a spread of heavy metals is also low, but that could change if the bomb is disturbed. In other words, they'd like the public to just leave it alone. On March 11th, 1958, at 3.53 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, a B-47 Echo departed Hunter Air Force Base, Georgia, as number three aircraft in a flight of four en route to an overseas base. After leveling off at 15,000 feet, the aircraft accidentally jettisoned an unarmed nuclear weapon which impacted on a sparsely populated area six and one half miles east of Florence, South Carolina. The bomb's high explosive material exploded on impact. The detonation caused property damage and several injuries on the ground. September 25, 1959. 
A U.S. Navy P-5M aircraft assigned to Naval Air Station Whidbey Island, Washington, crashed in the Pacific Ocean about 100 miles west of the Washington-Oregon border. It was carrying an unarmed nuclear anti-submarine weapon. The weapon was never recovered. June 7, 1960, at McGuire Air Force Base in New Jersey, a BOMARC, and BOMARC stands for Boeing Michigan Aeronautical Research Center, air defense missile in ready storage condition, and that means permitting launch in two minutes, was destroyed by explosion and fire after a high-pressure helium tank exploded and ruptured in the missile's fuel tanks. The warhead was also destroyed by the fire. Contamination was restricted to an area immediately beneath the weapon and an adjacent elongated area approximately 100 feet long, caused by drain-off of firefighting water. January 24, 1961, at Goldsboro, North Carolina. During a B-52 airborne alert mission, structural failure of the right wing resulted in two weapons separating from the aircraft during the aircraft's breakup. One bomb's parachute deployed and the weapon received little impact damage. The other bomb fell free and broke apart upon impact. No explosion occurred. Five of the eight crew members survived. A portion of one weapon containing uranium could not be recovered despite evacuation in the waterlogged farmland to a depth of 50 feet. The Air Force subsequently purchased the land and since that time has required permission for anyone to dig there. December 5, 1965, an A-4 Skyhawk aboard the USS Ticonderoga cruising in the Philippine Sea loaded with a B-43 thermonuclear bomb for a training exercise taxied off one of the carrier's elevators. The crew around the airplane attempted to stop the A-4 from going over the side by throwing chalks under the wheels, but they were unsuccessful. All the rescuers could find was the pilot's helmet. The rest went to the bottom of the ocean in about 16,000 feet of water. This is the only weapon on this list that is capable of nuclear detonation when it was lost because it's not possible to remove the core from a B-43 thermonuclear weapon. And though the incident took place just 70 miles from the Ryukyu Islands, the U.S. government did not notify the Japanese government about it until 1989. On January 17, 1966, a B-52 and a KC-135 collided over southern Spain, and they scattered four B-28 thermonuclear bombs around the fishing village of Palomares. The conventional explosives for two of the bombs exploded, but the nuclear components did not detonate because they were not armed. The U.S. military sent troops to pick up the undetonated nuclear weapon that fell on land and clean up the radioactive pieces scattered by the two which did detonate. To find the fourth one, which landed in the Mediterranean Sea, the U.S. government deployed ALVIN, a small deep ocean submersible, which was pretty high tech for its time, but that crew nearly died when the sub was almost entangled in the parachute that was still attached to the bomb on the sea floor. It's worth noting that the service members who helped find the landward bombs and clean up the wreckage developed cancers which they claimed were linked to that mission 56 years ago. January 21st, 1968. A B-52 from Plattsburgh Air Force Base, New York, crashed and burned some seven miles southwest of the runway at Thule Air Force Base in Greenland while approaching the base to land. Six of the seven crew members survived. The bomber carried four nuclear weapons, all of which were destroyed by fire. Some radioactive contamination occurred in the area of the crash, which was on the sea ice. 237,000 cubic feet of contaminated ice, snow, and water with crash debris were removed to an approved storage site in the United States over the course of a four-month operation. Spring of 1968 in the Atlantic Ocean. When the USS Scorpion, SSN 589, sank in 1968, there were two Mark 45 Aster torpedoes with nuclear warheads aboard. It can be assumed with certainty that the integrity of the weapons was compromised due to sea pressure and that the weapons were exposed to seawater immediately after the sinking. The special nuclear material, plutonium and highly enriched uranium from the warheads has not been recovered. And finally, the last nuclear weapons accident summarized in this report takes place on September 19, 1980 at an ICBM facility in Damascus, Arkansas. During routine maintenance in a Titan II silo, an Air Force repairman dropped a heavy wrench socket which rolled off a work platform and fell towards the bottom of the silo. The socket bounced and struck the missile, causing a leak from a pressurized fuel tank. The missile complex and the surrounding area were evacuated and a team of specialists was called in from Little Rock Air Force Base, the missile's main support base. About eight and one half hours after the initial puncture, fuel vapors within the silo ignited and exploded. The explosion fatally 
injured one member of the team. 21 other U.S. Air Force personnel were injured. The missile's reentry vehicle, which contained the nuclear warhead, was recovered intact. And just because the Cold War is over doesn't mean we're done with nuclear weapons accidents. For example, in 2007, the Air Force found itself embroiled in a controversy when a B-52 bomber crew took off from Minot Air Force Base in North Dakota, flew all the way across the country, and landed at Barksdale Air Force Base in Louisiana, ignoring the fact they had six nuclear weapons on the bomber's wings. And then later, in February of 2009, a British nuclear-powered missile submarine carrying nuclear warheads collided with a French submarine also carrying nuclear warheads in the eastern Atlantic Ocean. So we've talked in detail about the U.S. military's nuclear weapons accident record. What about the Soviet Union? Well, Hans Christensen, who's the director of the Nuclear Information Project for the Federation of American Scientists, recently told the military news outlet Task and Purpose that compared to the Soviet Union, the U.S. record is pretty impressive. For example, about 600 miles northeast of Bermuda, under 18,000 feet of seawater, there lies a Soviet Yankee One-class nuclear-powered missile submarine that suffered an explosion and a fire in one of its missile tubes on October 3rd, 1986. The submarine sank three days later, carrying 34 nuclear warheads. That incident alone accounts for more missing warheads than the entire list of missing U.S. weapons. All right, that'll do it for this episode. If you'd like to help support the channel, please consider using the super thanks, the heart icon below, or become a patron at patreon.com slash wardcarroll. And in the meantime, I look forward to talking to you again very soon.